We're talking with Dr. Ira Bayak, director of the palliative care program at Dartmouth-Hitchcock, about the importance of developing an advanced directive document. You know, if I've learned anything about how you can best go through a serious illness, I would say it's together. Because we do it together anyway. You know, one person gets a diagnosis, a family gets the illness. Knowing that, um, while we hope for the best, we should be able to talk with one another honestly about what we hope for, what we fear and what we hope for. And in order to empower one another, to advocate for ourselves and, and one another, it's really helpful these days to write it down. In the state of New Hampshire, frankly, and in the state of Vermont, there is no law that gives even your spouse authority to speak for you if you are unable to speak for yourself. We have to fill out those things called durable powers of attorney for health care. We have to give somebody the health care authority to speak for us if we're unable to speak for ourselves. I look at that as a way of, first and foremost, protecting those we love. Because if I'm in a car accident driving home today and I get a head injury and I'm seriously ill, the doctors aren't sure I'm going to survive and they're asking questions of my wife and my daughters about whether and how long to put me through treatment. I, I won't be able to stop that. That's who's going to get asked. What I can do is give them clear authority to speak for me so that an ethics committee doesn't need to get involved, and heaven forbid, a court or a judge doesn't need to get involved. They have clear, unquestioned authority to speak for me. And then I, I want to tell them what I think I would want in those circumstances, always deferring to them who, who I trust, know, and love me, will act in my best interests. But I want to at least tell them what I think I would want about CPR, about being on a ventilator, about having tube nutrition or hydration, so that perhaps I can lessen the burden that they are going to feel as they wrestle with these, frankly, life and death decisions. So giving them authority, perhaps shouldering some of the burden myself is the reason I have an advanced directive, power of attorney for health care, on file. When people come to me and they're seriously ill, I see them perhaps in clinic where they're going to be going through an a aggressive course of treatment for their disease. And I bring up advanced directives. Sometimes they say, well, but I thought there was a chance of treating this, as if even talking about an advanced directive meant that I knew something about bad news that I just wasn't yet sharing with them. My response when they say that and they're kind of recoil and say, do we have to talk about that? I thought it was, I don't think the news was that bad. I say two things. One, we do this for everyone. We think that having an advanced directive on file is the best care possible. And we do it for everyone we see here. It's not about your prognosis or your disease. We think this is the best care for people we serve. The second thing I say is, I have an advanced directive. And frankly, so does every adult in my family, including my two daughters, were, you know, one's in their, her late 20s and one's in her early 30s. They're both healthy. I'm healthy. But this is a way we care for one another. What I said to my daughters when I asked them to please fill out an advance directive, I said, the worst thing I can imagine is one of you being seriously injured or ill. Perhaps the only thing worse than that would be somebody else trying to stick their nose into our business. If tragedy befalls our family, could we at least keep it in the family? And so that's not implicit that my wife, for instance, if I don't have an advanced directive, if I don't have anything written down on file, it's not implicit that she would be able to make health care decisions on my behalf? In some states, there are laws that actually specify if somebody doesn't have an advanced directive on file, first degree relatives can speak for them and have the authority to speak for them. They usually go from spouse to parents to adult children and of that nature. In both New Hampshire and Vermont, no such law exists. And so while we, by tradition, turn to close relatives to help us make decisions about somebody's treatment when they can't speak for themselves, the patient can't speak for his, uh, himself or herself, 
In fact, when there's conflict in families, um, there may be, it may be necessary to go to an ethics committee or even a court to decide who actually should be making this decision. Um, and, uh, and it's simply not clear. And sometimes delays happen and sometimes, frankly, as I mentioned, family conflict happens, w which, at least in retrospect, was not necessary, could have been avoided. In writing it down, in giving your spouse full authority, that at least makes it clear to everyone in the family who's got the whole vote. While we always, for, in, a, in a clinical sense, try to create or foster understanding and support, even consensus within families, at the end of the day, it's really good to have one person who has authority. And there might be an element to this where it's good to open the conversation as part of developing the document. I think, it, I think conversation is really helpful. People, people think that, you know, the good death is somehow um, a matter of chance. Well, you know, there may be some good fortune involved, some chance involved, but there's a whole lot more about planning and preparation that's required so that even during this difficult, unwanted stage of life, your values can be reflected in, in the plans and what happens to you. Does, would an advanced directive also help the medical team in terms of planning care? I think that having an advanced directive very often helps medical teams in understanding what the patient's values are, their preferences, and, and again, guiding families it, during this difficult stage of decision making. In my hands and in the, our team's hands, yeah, they're valuable tools, uh, and we really use them as a counseling tool in the process of shared decision making to, to find out what choices of treatment best fit not just the physical condition but the person's personal choices. I guess to clarify, for some people they might think that this hinges around one single decision which is about life support machinery. Um, you know, do you want to turn it off or not, right. what else, what other sorts of decisions should be, I mean, maybe that's part of an advanced directive, but what other sorts of things should be in the document? Well, first and foremost, the element in the advanced directive that I look for and I think is key is who is empowered to speak for you if you're unable to speak for yourself. That, if that's all we have in an advanced directive, I think that that's very valuable. Beyond that, giving the person you provide authority to some sense of what you'd want about CPR and uh, um, uh, mechanical ventilation, medically administered nutrition and hydration, dialysis, those sorts of treatments is also very valuable. But beyond that, people can state preferences in advanced directives for whether they want to be considered for an organ donation. Um, whether they uh, want to be cremated or buried, they can put you know, what funeral home they want if they so choose. Uh, they can also um, state their choices for how they want to be cared for in non-medical ways, what kind of music that they would like in a room if they were had hours or just a day or two to live, um, who they'd want to have contacted, who they wouldn't want to have contacted, frankly. Um, all of these sorts of uh, personal preferences, um, the advanced directive provides a place to express them. Do we offer any help? for people here at DHMC in terms of drafting an advanced directive? Yes, we do offer help for people to complete advanced directives at DHMC. We have on file and can provide to anybody who asks uh, the uh, both New Hampshire state form, which comes in an, a very nice, well uh, put together brochure um, that explains what the, what the actual form is. Uh, similarly for Vermont, which also has a nice pamphlet wrapped around their form. Uh, that helps people fill it out, but we can go through that with people. We can explain to them how to do that. Um, the Office of Care Management uh, often will help people with advanced directive forms uh, at least twice a week at the Health Education Center here. There are um, classes or talks about advanced directives, and, and you could just stop by the Health Information Desk on the fourth floor uh, and ask for an advanced directive form and be given one, probably get some help from the person at the desk there, frankly, and filling it out. This Healthy Highlight is brought to you by Dartmouth-Hitchcock and Ledyard National Bank, working together with our community partners to improve your well-being.